Have you ever wondered what makes one person achieve everything they've ever wanted in life, and another person get nowhere close? Simple, it all comes down to what you do on a daily basis, and there's no easier way to stay on track than having a routine fit for you to guide you along the way. So, I got you. Today we're going to be going over not just my daily routine, but I'm also going to help you build yours as well. But only if you subscribe to the channel. All right, first things first, pull out something to take some sort of notes on. It could be a piece of paper, it could be your phone, whatever you wanna do, just have something you can write anything down. All right, so in order to be able to make this fit you and your daily routine, the things you're trying to achieve, help it to be in line with your daily activity, we need to first know what you are trying to achieve. That way we can accommodate this routine that you're gonna be building out on your own to fit your daily routine. So what I want you to do right now on that thing you're taking notes on because I know you're taking notes because I'm looking quite dapper today. So I'm feeling educational. So you better be taking notes. This is going to be a good one. I want you to write down some of the main goals that you are wanting to achieve by let's say the end of the year. I know it's basically August by the time you're seeing this video, but we still do have a few more months left in the year. You have plenty of time to achieve your goals. So write out some of the goals you want to achieve by the end of the year. You don't have to be too specific with your goals you're trying to achieve. Just list out some rough bullet points. So for example, mine that I have written down are going to be eat cleaner, get better sleep over Overall, I want to improve my relationships. I want to have more activities in my daily routine, basically just getting out of my very consistent, boring schedule. And then I want to complete a project I've been working on. It doesn't matter how many points you have or how little points you have, just write down all of the things you're trying to achieve and we could go from there. So I want you to write down your list and the schedule we're creating has to fit in all of the important points for you. So if you have like a million points you listed out, just note down like what some of the top ones actually are. That way we could come back to this when we're creating this schedule because we're going to want our schedule to fit all of these goals in as many as possible. Otherwise, it's not going to be a good schedule because it's not getting you to where you want to go. So all of these things that you listed out favorited to be your ones you want in your routine, these are going to be your daily non-negotiables. This meaning you have to somehow fit these in every single day, ideally for it to be a valid schedule. So now that we have these, the next step is going to be jumping over and actually start creating your daily schedule. Now, this is a lot easier said than and done. Take it from me. So first things first, what we're going to do, and I'm going to be doing this all along with you with my schedule I've done in the past, just so you know what's worked for me, some of the corrections I made and some of the mistakes I've made. We're going to start off on when you want to wake up. So personally for me, I've been wanting to wake up around 8 a.m. It just seems to be what works for me. So start off there. Start out a time on when you want to wake up. So let me pull up my daily schedule. I'll put it up on screen here just so you can kind of follow along with me. As I'm going over this, I want you to think about where you should be putting stuff on your schedule based on how mine looks. So starting off here, I have my first ever attempt at scheduling my day. Um, this is a weekday. So this is Monday through Friday. I was basically running this exact same schedule. I had my morning block after I woke up. I had that for about an hour, 15 minutes. This is where I would do some of my more tedious tasks or like my things I do every single day without fail, like morning sunlight, meditate, stuff like that. From there, I jumped into my morning work session slash the time when I get would get ready. So this would be like me planning out my day, for example, or doing some of those tasks that I just want to get out of the way first thing in the morning. And then I would also get ready in this time frame, as it says. Then I would go into another work session, which would be between 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. So it's about an hour and a half time block. For your time blocks, when you're scheduling your work sessions, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> um, 90 minutes is probably the max you want to do in one sitting. You could have breaks scheduled out in there on when you're going to take your break time. Not required. Um, I just had it 90 minute period, but that was my first work block. And then I would go into eating my first meal of the day. At this time I was doing intermittent fasting, which would be 12 o'clock. I had a one hour space for there. Um, I'm a freaking slow eater. If anyone knows me, anyone would tell you I'm the slowest eater you've ever met because I get these cankers, I bite my lip. Anyways, it's a horrible thing. So I need about an hour to eat, me personally. Not ideal, but it'll work. Um, then I went into another hour long work session. I would then do some learning and notes. Um, this was just in preparation for this project I've been doing. I was doing this routine about a year ago now. So this was just me getting in preparation. So this was helping me achieve that goal. Looking back at my goals that I have set out for myself, eating cleaner, I have about an hour work period or an hour eating block 
which is where I could eat cleaner if I wanted to, better sleep, I had enough time blocked out for my sleep so far as we can see, and I've also worked on completing my project. So those are some of the main things that we have blocked out so far, keep note of that. Then I have another work session here, it's about two and a half hours. I probably could have put a manual break in here, but as I'm working, I kind of just know. That's the thing, you don't have to make your schedule like so it works for other people, it just has to work for you. Then I would get home from work and I would have my family time. So that is me building better relationships. I had family time blocked out on there, so I knew every single day till 8, 15 p.m. I would be doing family time. I wouldn't worry about any work, just being with my family. Then I would go into my lifting workout, which I had blocked out for an hour, 15 minutes because I had commute, stuff like that. So I had my lifting workout there. And then we'd go into my night routine slash wind down time, getting me in bed by 1030 PM, waking up at 7 AM, which is giving me eight and a half hours in bed. Perfect amount of time. So that was my schedule I was running, but Funny enough, it didn't work for me. The main reason that is, is because your schedule is just gonna change 24 seven. My work schedule would get different and everything would just change and it throws off your entire schedule. So there's gonna be variables that aren't in your control that'll make it hard to follow this exactly. And so you're gonna have to update and adapt it a lot. Another thing I ran into very early on was having my weekend schedule and weekday schedule being completely different. So because of that, I had to make a completely different schedule for my weekends. Here was my weekend routine attempt number one at making a solid weekend routine waking up at 10 a.m because thursday the night before i would stay up a little bit later um, so i would wake up at 10 a.m that day i would then block out something i enjoy for an hour and 15 minutes so that could be absolutely anything that i enjoy it could be going outside it could be playing a game whatever it may be i would do that in that time period i would then eat for my hour again break my intermittent fasting get ready for about 45 minutes or so. I would then work slash film any videos I have or any work I had to get done in that period. I would have some time to do that. And then I would jump into my indoor workout, super quick 45 minute workout. After that, it cut off on my screenshot, but I would just hang out with family and friends. So I would dedicate the rest of that day to family and friends time. So that there, that schedule was pretty good. It fit almost all of my goals into it, but it just was not working for me. It didn't hold me very accountable. So I didn't follow it that exactly. There'd be some days I'm like oh I could go 15 minutes over here 15 minutes over here which when you start doing that your entire schedule is going to go to crap you might as well not be following the schedule so because of that and my goals changing overall I had to create a new schedule which is what you're going to be seeing on screen here so this was attempt two, kind of attempt two. it's a lot more realistically um, I made so many little tweaks to this, but this is the one I'm currently working with. So you might be saying, Carson, you had a lot more free time on these other this other schedule. How is this a better schedule for you? Well, I'm doing something I enjoy in the morning, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. For me, the more I can have things written out in an exact time frame of when I need to do them, the better. It just works for me. It doesn't happen for everyone. That's just works for me. So that's why you need to test and figure out what works for you. As you start doing things as well, don't be too particular on the time frames you have set out for your schedule as you're creating this first draft of it because as you start doing them you're going to figure out things take a little bit different time and it's not actually taking as long as you're thinking it will or vice versa so you can change the durations of things and make more time for other things if needed just figuring out how long things are going to take as you start doing them it'll take a few months for this to happen so it's not like a huge rush a couple things to note while making your routine before you get started and a few just overall health things that every single person should be having on their schedule eight and a half hours in bed is ideal dedicated to sleeping time. Some people it might take them a little bit to fall asleep, so on and so forth. If that's the case for you, take a little bit longer to wind down, but you should have about eight and a half hours in bed dedicated to sleep. It's very important to have chill time. You shouldn't be working 24 seven. If so, you might highly regret that later on in your life. This is a very controversial thing for a lot of people, especially with the hustle culture a lot of us have, but just know things could change every single day. Any day you wake up, nothing's guaranteed. Spend the time with the people you care about in your life because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Make sure you're filling out your entire day schedule wise. Otherwise, in those little break periods, you're going to have nothing to do. You're not going to have any direction and you're going to use it doing nothing. You're going to watch TikTok or waste that time. So make sure your entire day is filled out to your schedule. Along with that, things you're doing are going to take as long as you allocate them. So what does this mean? Let's say you have a task that generally you could get done in 10 minutes if you were rushing as fast as possible, but you have 30 minutes blocked out on your calendar to do it. It's going to take that entire 30 minutes. I'm not sure why this is a thing for people, but it's true. And it happens to me all the time. Like I catch myself. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't got too much on my to-do list today. This will be an easy day. It somehow still 
still takes the entire day because I get distracted easier, I'm not as locked in, it happens. So make the duration for each activity as short as possible, otherwise you will use that entire time. Finally, it's very important to have an in-depth list for each activity on your calendar that you should be following and marking off. So basically like some sort of to-do list that's giving you direction for each category. So you can't just have a work block blocked out, sit down at your desk and magically expect to be able to work fine. You have to have a to-do list that you need to be working on in that work block. So it's kind of levels to it, but having this solid frame framework of this entire calendar telling you what you should be doing when, you're going to be literally more productive than 99% of the people in this world. So now with all of that information, you should have a general direction on how to create your first to-do list. If you would need any help like revisions wise or anything like that, you could DM me on Instagram, CarsonJohns27. I don't post too much on there, but, um, or you could comment it down in the video description if you're doing it on notes or anything like that. If you need any help, I'm sure everyone in the comments will help you and I'm more than happy to help you as well. Anyways, if this video was beneficial to you in any way leave a like subscribe i have a project kind of goes along these same lines this project i've been talking about forever that i think you would very much enjoy if you like this style of video so dm me on instagram i'll tell you a little bit more about it keep you in the loop when it does come out i appreciate you for watching i hope you learned at least one thing and i hope you know i'm rooting for each and every one of you and i'll see you in the next video peace